We're continuing Shmuel Aleph. We're on Perik Yud Dalit. It says, after Shmuel has reprimanded Shol for not waiting the full week before to bring the Korbanos, before fighting the Plishtim, and the Navi has just finished enumerating all the factors that show that the Jews are in grave danger in this battle. Um, in fact, they're outnumbered greatly. The fact that they don't have any swords and a number of other factors, uh, the enemy is very close, which does not put the Jews in a very good position. So now we continue Perikidal Pasagalev and begin to see where the salvation is going to come from. By Hiayom, and it was on this day, by Yoimer Yoinasan ben Shol El Hanar no Se Kelov, and Yoinasan, the son of Shol, speaks to the lad, uh, like the arms bearer of his, and says, Lucha, let's go, the Nabra El Matzav Plishtim, and let's cross over to the garrison of the Plishtim, Er Shemayever Halos, which is on the other side. However, Ula Aviv Lo Higid, but he did not relate this to his father. So Mabam explains, at this point in time, Yoinasen had no uh, desire to fight with the Plishtim when he wanted to go and see the garrison. Uh, he has no desire for that. We'll see shortly that that changes. But at this point he does. And the mom is going to prove a number of ways why that's so. Um, now, as well, the mom explains a little bit of the geography that's going on over here. Remember, the Plishtim are in Michmash and the Jews are in the city of Geva. And Michmash is to the north, and Geva is to the south, as which will be explained. And Shol and Yonis and the Jewish camp was not only in Geva, which was into the south, but they were either even in the southern extremity of Geva. Why is that? Because uh, Shol does not want the Plishtim to get a good look at Shol's camp, because if he did, the Plishtim would realize there's only 600 soldiers with Shol, and this is going to be a laugher. So they would attack him immediately, wouldn't even be waiting. So he's out of eyesight from the Plishtim. So Yonasan wants to pass from the southern part of Geva to the, no to the northern part of Geva. And from there he can stand across the garrison of the Plishtim and be able to get, an, uh, get a look at what's going on with the Plishtim. And that's what it means to the, to the to Plishtim garrison, which is on the other side, meaning on the northern side, as it were. And therefore, he didn't tell his father. There was nothing to tell his father because he wasn't planning on doing anything. He wanted to, you know, why he wanted to just get a, get a look to see what the situation looks like. Bays. And now the, the Navi elaborates on this point we just said. And Shaul is, is living on the edge of Giva, the southern edge of Giva under the pomegranate, which is uh, by Migron. Not sure what the significance of the pomegranate is. But all my share, Imo Kishesh Meosish, and the nation that's with him is about 600 people. Again, that's, that's explaining why Shoal is on the southernmost part. So he didn't want the police to see how few his numbers were. And to that distance is what Yonason wanted to cross. Pasek Gimel, Vachia ben Achituv, Achia, the son of Achituv, who is Achituv? Achi Ikavod, who is the brother of Ikavod, who is this? Ben Pinchas, the son of Pinchas, Ben Eli, the son of Eli, Kayan Hashem, the Kayan Hashem, who was a Kohen as well. Beshilo in Shilo, no say Aphod was carrying the Aphod, and the Aphod had the breastplate on it. And the nation did not know that Yonason had left. So let's just um, see the genealogy over here. If you recall in the beginning of Sefer Shmuel, Eli was the Kayen, Eli was the Shofet, the leader of the Jews. He had children who weren't so good, and one of them was Pinchas. We know that when Pinchas died in battle, his wife was informed of his death, she gave birth to a child. The bad news brought on her labor to give birth to the child, and she named the child Ikavod, Ikabad, Ikavod, which means a lack of 
covered for the Jewish people. So, who, who are we dealing with over here? So, Anikavod was a grandson of Pinchas. So, Achia, who is the son of Achituv, who is the brother of Ikavod. I don't know why they're giving the genealogy this way. Uh, if Achia is the brother of Achituv, of Achituv, all right, whether he's the son of Achituv, who's the brother of Ikavod, right? I mean, so I would assume. If this, no, yeah, but I would assume that it's also the son of Pinchas, right? I guess since the only one you really know from the previous source was Ikavod, who was the grandson of Eli, he must have had an, an older brother, Achitu, had to have, yeah. because Pinchas died when Ikavod was born. So it comes out, Achia is a great grandson of Eli, a great grandson of Eli who was the Kohen at this time with the breastplate and the nation didn't know that he left. So Malvin gives further proofs that Yonason did not plan on doing any mischief at this point because number one, uh, we already said number one, he didn't tell his father, number one. Number two is that uh, there was a Kohen, Achia ben Achituv, who had the Urim Vetumim, who had the breastplate upon which you could ask questions. And they could ask, and the Jews would know if they should go to battle or not. That was some of that could be asked. So why didn't he ask of Hashem to do this? And number three, the rest of the people didn't know that he went. And if, the, if he was going to plan an attack, he would have let everybody know that what he's planning instead of putting everybody's life in danger. So there's three reasons why it's pretty clear that when Yenison went, he had no plans of doing any battle. Pasuk Dawud. Uvein amabros asher bikei shonesen lavor amatzav plishtim between the crossings which Yonason wanted to cross to get to the plishti garrison was uh, there were two imposing um, precipice precipices precipi I don't know what the the, 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 the plural of a precipice is uh, but anyway there was a shein hasela may I ever miser there was one rocky precipice on one side and one rocky precipice on the other side. In other words, when, when with Geva on the, so on the south and Michmash on the north, each area had a precipice on its furthest side. So the northern side of Geva, which was south of Michmash, and the southern side of Michmash, which was north of Geva, each had a huge, huge rocky precipice. And they even they were so huge they were given names. Veshemo Echad Botseitz, Veshemo Echad Sene. One was called Botseitz and one was called Sene. So now it's these rocky precipices that one would have to cross if you, uh, well, either go around, to go around it if you want to get to the area, or you have to climb over, which would be a very difficult thing. And that's what he explains now in Hay. One of them jutted out from the north towards Michmash, and one from the south towards Geva. Geva was on the southern side, Michmash on the northern side. Okay, the Navi is just describing how difficult this terrain is that he's about to traverse. Pasikvav. Vayoymer Yehoinasan. El Hanar no se Kelov. Now, if you notice carefully what's happened to his name, a hey has been added to his name. His name was Yoinasan. And now, this is the time, one time that his, his name is spelled with a hey in, in, uh, inserted inside there. So Yoinasan said to the lad, his arms bearer, Lechav and Abra el Matzav Ha'arelim Ho'ela. Let us cross over to the Garrison of the Arelim, another new way of describing the police team. The Arelim are the uncircumcised. Let us cross over to the uncircumcised. Ulayas Hashem Lanu. Perhaps Hashem will do for us. Because there's nothing that can contain Hashem, can hold him back from a salvation, whether it be with a lot of people or whether it be with few people. So the Malvin explains over here, even though 
that this was uh, he hadn't told anybody he hadn't planned on doing any war it would be very difficult for him to reach the police the garrison <clears throat> in any way to surprise them because he has to uh, go around this very large rocky precipice still in all a, a spirit of gvura a spirit of strength from Hashem overcame him at this point sort of like a little bit of a Ruach HaKodesh this came suddenly to, to Yonasan unprepared he was for this and he tells his young lad he says let's go and cross to them literally let's go fight them even though it's not naturally possible to defeat them but he asks, perhaps Hashem will do for us what? He'll do for us a miracle because after all it really is nothing that holds Hashem back in other words if you're looking at natural forces over here so normally when there's natural forces you need one force to overpower the other and certainly that ain't going to happen over here but that but we know that there's nothing that holds back for Hashem so as far as Hashem's concerned, it doesn't matter a little, it doesn't matter a lot. If Hashem wants us to win, we're going to win. What really he's saying is, listen, either we're going to get massacred or we're going, we're going to win. Right? There's only 600 soldiers back in my father's camp. I mean, with all the factors involved here, it looks like, according to natural ways, we're going to get wiped out terribly. So now the only issue is, is God going to do a miracle? So he's going to do a miracle. He'll do one when the police can come to uh, Geva. He's going to do a miracle. He's going to do one right now. So let's start the miracle right now. now. Obviously, he wouldn't have just decided to do that, number one, unless he felt some kind of very strong, godly spirit come over him, number one, and a very close connection to Hashem. That's number one. And you'll see it. there'll be a second factor we're going to mention in the next couple of sukkim in just a moment. Now, it's interesting, in this Pasuk, that coincides with um, Yonasan's spiritual uh, revival, so to speak, of himself. You notice the hay in Yonasan, which obviously shows a higher level. Uh, it's a hint to Hashem. Obviously, letter hay is a very spiritual letter. So we've added uh, a hay right after the first letter Yud, Yonasan. So you've already got Yud, hay, and Vav. You've got three out of the four letters of Hashem's name right there. So the Navi refers to a higher elevated spiritual state that Yonasan is in. And also that he calls them Arelim. Now let us tell you a very interesting statement from Rav Tzadok, which will give you some thought as to who this Yonasan is. I'll just read a few lines from, the, from, the, uh, from Rav Tzadok. He says, he's talking about the ideas of Mashiach ben David and Mashiach ben Yosef. The Mashiach that's coming from, da that is the, from, the, the, from Yosef Yehuda, that's from David, and that of ben Yosef. He says, Varishon me nishmas Mashiach ben Yosef, shniskala belamazeh, the first human being who, who <coughs> was revealed in this world as one of the, the Mashiach ben Yosef's. It's Yonason. Yonason ben Shol from the tribe of Binyamin, right? And that's why he was killed. And we don't find any sin that he did that because of that he should have been killed. Even though he wasn't one of the four people who never sinned, but the Torah mentioned he did anything wrong. In other words, uh, <clears throat> as a Mashiach ben Yosef, what is what? What's the holiday of Mashiach ben Yosef? The idea of Mashiach ben Yosef is is the physical symbol of a human being able to fight against the Yitzhar. Remember, the difference between Mashiach ben Yosef and Mashiach ben David is Mashiach ben Yosef fights against all the evil, gets rid of all the evil in the world, and basically that's the evils of the Yitzhar, and specifically it comes from taiva, from lust, and um, and and therefore. Uh, as we know, as we mentioned last time, there were four people who died only because the snake made the people die. And one of them is Binyamin. So, Yo so Yonas and Yonas is not one of those four, but he's from the tribe of Binyamin. And that means he's, and, and that means he's very, very holy people. And Yonas and it was a great tzaddik. And as opposed to Shaul, you see, who were told did specific sins, and because of specific sins, he gets punished and dies. You don't find anything wrong with Yonasan. 
That means you're speaking about a very, very special person. And Yonason was such a special person. And that's why he's fighting, he himself says, let's fight against these Arelim. Arelim is a very pejorative term to people who have foreskins, meaning they're Balei Taiva, lustful people. We have to fight against these lustful people, which the Plishtim always, that was their greatest uh, harm that they want to bring to the Jewish people. And so we see an example of someone that's like the spark of the Mashiach Ben Yosef, the first physical person who had a little bit of the Mashiach Ben Yosef inside himself, besides Yosef himself, who really did a lot to fight these negative forces, was Yoinasan. And he says, This is the concept of his great love that he had for David. In other words, he felt very bonded with David. And that's the idea that uh, mystically we understand that the Mashiach ben Yosef, the Mashiach ben David are like two friends that kind of cannot be separated from each other because they both represent different sides of the coin that have to happen. The Mashiach ben Yosef has to be the guy who gets rid of the evil in the world. And once the evil is gone, then the Mashiach ben Yosef then ben David is able to, to uh, positively do his service to Hashem that comes from service of the heart versus service of the mind. Service of the mind is to control oneself and not fall into negative areas. And service of the heart is to express one's great love for Hashem. So we see that he was, uh, that, uh, that he was of this category, Mashiach ben Yosef personality type. So this, this is who Yonasan is over here. And unfortunately, so he realized that this was a war against the Arelim, the, the, unholy, uncircumcised people against that of Torah and this gave Yonason a very tremendous divine inspiration and based on that divine inspiration he is now ready to try to have a miracle happen for himself so he's not going to just attack them it would be very foolhardy so what does he do? let's look in Pasuk Zion Vayomer lo nose Caleb I'm sorry uh, yeah Vayomer lo nose Caleb Asei kol asher kilvavecha so his arms bear says, do what's in your heart. Nite loch, incline yourself. You know, in other words, go in the direction you want to go. Ehinini imcha kil vavecha. And I will be with you like your heart. So, obviously, the arms bear understands it's, it's not possible to, do, uh, to accomplish such a thing in a natural way. Unless you have to mamish, throw your whole heart into this and give yourself over to Hashem. So, there, you know, unless you have a godly assistance, nothing's going to happen here. And we can't be afraid. So he says, do what's in your heart. Because the heart is that which can see, you know, if there's any spiritual uh, help happening over here. So a person with a lot of heart, a lot of spirit will be able to feel this. And that's what he brings on the famous Chazal. A uh, person of great spirit, spiritual spirit, is able to rely on any visions that his heart sees. And even though he may not actually see what's going on, but the Gemara used an expression, his mazel, his neshama, higher level neshama knows what's going on. In other words, sometimes you have a feeling that this is the right thing to do. Sometimes the Gemara says, sometimes you get a feeling of being frightened about something. And even though you don't see what's frightening, your mazel, your neshama, your higher level of neshama is able to know there's something dangerous going on. You have a fear of doing something. And on the other hand, you have a certain uh, uh, f- spirit of courage comes over you and you feel like doing something very courageous. And it's only because something from your heart, from your neshama, is seeing something even though you physically cannot see this. So, uh, and he says, I'm with you. My heart's with you as, as well, even though I don't see anything. Uh, but I'll be with your heart, which obviously is seeing something over here. So I'll, I will be with you. Yeah? Isn't this a bit of a problem because isn't there a principle that you're not supposed to rely on a miracle? Again, Even it, though he's a higher level, he basically starts up by saying, you know, perhaps... I'm again, sure. I think that's what he's saying in the verse before. He's saying, either way, if we don't do anything, we, we, we're going to be dead. If God doesn't do a miracle, we're dead. We're dead anyway. So if he's doing a miracle, he's doing a miracle. And if he ain't, he ain't. He's not, it's not like the Jews were sitting calmly and started up with the Plishtim. Plishtim are ready to destroy them. Plain and simple. It's just a matter of hours. So now, they're going to go and kill you. So you might as well try to, and you're getting this spiritual feeling that means Hashem is, is I'm sensing from Hashem, it's time to act and not wait to be slaughtered. 
It's not, you know, it's not like, you, it's not like you're, you're being a, taking a foolhardy risk. If you are outnumbered by gazillion to one, you have no swords, you have nothing, and police are ready to kill you, you're dead. But <laughs> That's I, all there is to it. Compare this to Yaakov, when he was going to meet Esau, and he, he, he didn't rely on a miracle, right? He split the camps, he... He did things and he died. Okay, but that's that's only when you can do something. Here there's nothing to do. There is nothing to do. They're finished. We we elaborated on how this is no way they're gonna win this battle. There's no way. No way six hundred people can overcome tens and tens of thousands of soldiers who have not only that, they have horsemen, they have chariots, you have nothing, they have swords, you don't have swords. That's it. And the police gym are not like nice guys, right? They're not going to take no prisoners. So they're terrible, terrible people. And they're, they're ready to destroy you. So obviously, the time is to do something. And sometimes, this is better than sitting, wait, sitting back waiting to get killed. You maybe take them by surprise. And this becomes a little bit, a little bit of a, of a normal way of giving Hashem the vehicle of doing the miracle for you. Remember, when Hashem does a miracle, he has to do it in at least some way that has some connection to normalcy. So we're going to see what y Yonason's plan is uh, from this. And we'll see, we'll do a little bit more. I'm not finished yet. It's a very important thing coming up that he would still not have done it unless he gets the right sign from Hashem that's coming up that I hope to say shortly. Yeah? Is this no uh, say Hashem? No, it's a, it's a regular guy. So what kind of chizuk does he get that his arms bearer is going to be with him? He didn't say chizuk. He's just telling arms bearer, let's go. Just like Avram took Eliezer with him. Right? When Avram took on 2.6 million soldiers, he took Eliezer with him. Okay, now we have a Jewish army. Now we have two. Now we can ambush them. Right? He's speaking to the arms bearer. The arms bearer. He's speaking to the arms bearer. And the arms bearer responded to him. That's all. What about the breast? The breastplate is not involved in this. Not in the picture at all. He didn't ask. They, he, uh, all it's we not used, there at all. Then no, it's back in the camp. Yeah. So he's not asking. He, when he left, he didn't plan on doing yes, anything. He yes. just wanted to see what was going on. Nothing. Okay. Now that he's there already, he's been overcome by a spiritual awakening. Yeah. So now, important pasuches and tests and yud is very important. He still wasn't ready to fight them until the following. The yamer yahinasim. Again, this Yohannesson says, We are now crossing to these people. And we will reveal ourselves to them. Now, now they're going to see us. And I want them to see us. And if the soldiers who see us say the following, Domo, sit still. Until we get to you. In other words, halt who goes there. Stay where you are. We are going to go to you. Then, Vamadu we will stand below them, below now, and we won't go up. And we're not going to plan any kind of attack. You can call Yamur if they say the following to us. Alu Aleinu. Hey, God, come here, guys. Come up to us. If they say that, Volinu, and we'll go up. We will go up. Kinasana Hashem because that's a sign that Hashem has put them in our hands, that Hashem has given us. And this is the sign. So that's what the commentaries explain that um, that Yonasan wanted to get a signal from Hashem if he should do this or not. And the signal from Hashem is what is going to be the response from these people. And certainly uh, the, the, the responses that they give would not have had to be these specific types of responses. And because they may say something besides it. There's more than two options of what they could have said. They could have said more than the, these exact words Domu Adigeno be silent until we reach you and and stand or to say come up to us right so there's different things they could have said besides these two so he's saying if we hear any one of these two lines we'll know exactly what we should do exactly this kind of expression and if they say this kind of expression then clearly it's the Hashkoch of Hashem it's the divine supervision of Hashem that's putting these words in their mouths and letting us know what we should do and again the Malbam emphasizes that this is a level of Ruach HaKodesh divine inspiration Hashem obviously gave him these words and it's similar to another uh, person who used a similar type you recall Gidon in, uh, in Shoftim Perik Zion said the same thing 
he, he was going to speak to the enemies and see what they have to say. So this is the sign that he's looking for to know if he should indeed attack them or not. So if he doesn't get that sign, then he knows I'll probably just run away. So he's saying, you know, before I'm going to do such a thing, he's already feeling spiritually aroused. He says, for me to do such a great thing, I need some kind of um, uh, word from Hashem. And this is the, the test I've made, as it were. Now this uh, little story over here has a very important Gemara. Gemara says like this, and this we're going to spend some time discussing over here. Gemara in Chulin, Tafsadi Hema Beis, the following. Omar Av, Kol Nachash, She'eno Keliezer, Eved Avraham, Ukiyonis, and Ben Shol, Eino Nachash. Nachash means um, the ability to foretell the future. Anyone who's trying to fortune tell. So we'll just read the words literally and we'll say, say what the problems are. We'll give two answers, one from the Radak and one from the Musar Hanavim. It says, anyone who tries to tell the future that's not like Eliezer or Yonasan is not considered Nachash, is not considered telling the future. And what did Eliezer do? Remember Eliezer, he comes to the, to the well and he says, I need a wife for Yitzchak. And if what if a young maiden comes and offers and asks her for a drink and she offers for me and for my camels, then I'll know that this one is for Yitzchak. Again, that's also a prediction, as it were. You know, what do you mean? He could offer water. It could be the worst person in the world. He says, no, no, this is my sign I'm making. She's going to see this, and I know that this is the one for Yitzchak. Similarly, uh, we find over here by Yohanan's son, he says, if they say this, then we'll do this. If they say that, we're going to do that. So this is the using signs to predict the future. So now, Morris is saying anyone who tries to predict the future in a way not like Eliezer and not like Yonason is not considered Nachash, is not considered predicting the future. Now, on a simple level, this is a great problem. Because why? Because the Torah says in, uh, clearly that one is not permitted to do, a, to do the act of Nachash, of predicting the future. You're not allowed to do this. So what's what, what's it what's it saying over here? Uh, that that you're that you're anyone who doesn't do it like Jonas and Eliezer, that's not called nachash. On the symbol of it means, well, if you want to know what's the way not to do it, that's the way Eliezer and Jonas did it. Whoever doesn't do it, it's a double negative. Whoever doesn't do it like Eliezer and Yonasan, that's not really called nachash. So which we would be, and that's what the Torah says you're not allowed to do. You're not allowed to do nachash. You're not allowed to. Uh, be a, a fortune teller as it were you're not allowed to t tell the future and we, so, so if you want to know so the simple reading would suggest if you want to know what is an act of Nachash which apparently the Torah says you're not allowed to do that would be an example of Eliezer and Yonasan and if you don't do it like them then I guess that's okay so that's that's obviously a major problem uh, the Radak he says this. Uh, so I photocopied uh, a couple of sheets of the red dot. And I'll be close to what we need. I don't know if I. Truth is, I got one more. I got my own. I got my own copy of the red dot. <laughs> we'll just go through a little bit of it. It's a long one. I'm not going to do the whole thing. What you're allowed to do it. Oh, that's, this is the problem. What does it mean? It's exactly what it means. That's the whole problem with the Gemara. What does Gemara mean? All right. So let's take a look uh, in the uh, right-hand column over there. He said, where I have it underlined. You see, there's a check mark by the test on the upper right-hand side, and I got it underlined a little bit over there. He says, "V'zeh eno nachla she'asher." So right back right here says, "This is not the kind of nachla that was forbidden, because the mahaya asher was forbidden. Why a kadosh baruch hu asher v'alichai? Hashem wouldn't have helped him. We're going to see in a minute. Hashem makes a big miracle for him." Obviously, the person went and did an outward Avera, Hashem would not assist him. But this and things similar to that, who called the Lord Yishma, and these are the, the, the word, the voice of words that people hear to give them strength. Kim Simon Vais al This is a sign for the action that's coming up. So now he's going to say, Don't be misled by what the rabbis say in Chulin. That I'm a rab called Nachash and Kalas Eved Avram Kenes and Mishol and Nachash. That Rab says the Gemara that anyone who tells the future like Eliezer and Yenisa is not telling the future. So he's saying Ki Eino Omer is not saying Sheyia Osa Nachash Oser. 
Kamo Shepreshu Rabbi. The more doesn't mean to say that, and this kind of Nachash is not allowed, as many people say. Amongst them, the Rambam. Rambam seems to learn this Gemara literally. And that means what they did wasn't correct, and what you're not to do is, is and you're not allowed to do that? No. Kine Eila. Now, because now he's going to discuss what is the kind of Nachash that other Gemara talk about that is not allowed. Kine Eilu Hamenachashim Bechulda Ubaovos. Eina kenachash Eliezer ki enesim. The who ha ya aser kemoshem rav asem. In other words, there the type of menachashim, the type of people who try to tell the future, is if, for example, we'll elaborate in one second. Let's say you see a weasel or you see a bird. That is not like the nachash of Eliezer ki enesim, and that which is clearly not allowed, as it says in the Gemara in Sanhedrin. It's, uh, it says in Vayikra, so it says, Lo Senachashim, you're not allowed to tell the future. Eila Menachashim Bechuldo Be'oivesu Be'kachavim. Those are the ones who try to tell the future by seeing what a weasel does, what a bird does, what the stars do, or some have the gears of the fish. Or let's say, Ve'omer Pito Nachlo Mitiv. Let's say the bread falls out of your mouth. Machlo Nachlo his staff falls out of his hand. See, Siko, or a deer runs in front of you and stops your path. O rave, Kore lo, a, a raven calls out to you. Shuo mimino, or a fox is to your right. The nachash mishmilo, a snake to your left. Or uh, if a person says, in other words, you know, the good old idea of the black cat. Yeah. If you see any, he says, oh, that's a sign I shouldn't do this. Those are the things that are prohibited. Or a person says, al tasso ki so we shouldn't start because it's morning. Or Rosh Chodesh, or Rosh Chodesh, or Moshe Shabbos, or Moshe Shabbos. He says, "Hine Elu Hat Varim Ukiyesim." These types of things, that things similar to that, Shenogu Ben Bali Hadeos Haros Mukav Mukhokam Migalim. These are people with false ideologies, and they establish them as rules to live by. The Chosim came on my team. They think that those are the things that bring the good and the bad. Zel Shasurat. The little Torah says, "Brother." In other words, the classical Nachash and his Asher is if you say. You make up certain rules in your mind. If, if, if a black cat comes in front of you, then I shouldn't go on this path. Why are you saying that? They're saying that that black cat has some mystical power in and of itself. It's the power of the cat. It's the power of the snake. All these examples that they give, even the power of the time. If you're investing power into these things, so you're fortune telling through powers other than God, that is what the Torah says, that is not allowed. And and a fault, but it's underlined now. In year Sodom Lasos Mice, if you if you want to do something, the Yasadavar Echad Laos the Simon Lamaisu, and you want to sign if you should do this, Kide Lachazek Libo, only to strengthen your heart, Laura Libo Davaru, and to arouse it to this thing, Zedarmur, that's allowed. If you make your own sign, and it's only there, not to say that I'm investing power in this sign, but I'm doing it just to give my, myself a little courage. That's allowed. Because if what Yonis and Elisha did was a bad thing, Hashem would not have answered them properly. And to assist him, would have done this. So now, he's saying like this. If you say, listen, I'd like to do a good thing, I'd like to attack the Plishtim, I think I'll try to make a Kiddush Hashem. But I'm, I'm a little bit nervous. I'm not sure if it's something I should do. So you make a sign. The sign is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be there. I'm going to see what they say. And based on what they say, that will give me an understanding of what I should do. So he, we're not investing power into the mouths of the police. Yeah. No, we're not. Because we're, we made the test. We made the test. As opposed to people saying, you know what, a black cat, if black cat goes, well, you shouldn't go. Why? Because it's always a black cat. It's always a black cat. It means the black cat has some kind of power. This, the bread falling out of your mouth, that means there's a certain power going on. That's, this is like established whenever this happens. Throughout history, we've got our little book of, 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 of charms, negative and positive, and this is what's in our book, and this is what we feel has power. Here, Jonas just walks and says, right now, this, for this moment, this is the test I'm making. Not that, you know, whenever a police says go up or go down, it means something. No, it's unique to this one scenario. I need courage. I want to feel that what I'm doing is something Hashem wants me to be doing. I'm not investing power into the cat. The cat is going to make something bad for me. 
but rather I'm, I'm saying or the cat represents a spiritual force that's an omen for something bad that's good old fashioned superstition that's not allowed Yonason is not being superstitious he is saying I want to do this I want to get a simon from Hashem what I should do and I'm making a very unique kind of simon which is beyond normal a cat walking in front of you is a very normal typical thing and it's like say stay away from the black cat no, something with that. I says, I want to make a simon. And my test is, if they'll say this, I should go. If they say this, I should not go. This is allowed. So if somebody made a simon and said, if a black cat were to... But, but we already... But it's one of these old established things. It's an established thing. You know, the people have already invested some kind of power into the black cat. Yeah. Oh, okay, because it has that history. It has that history. So you could say, okay, if... I I don't know, I see him. Well, Where's if you there? notice, if you notice, the only two times it was used by Eliezer and Yonason was saying what event is going to happen. And it's and more than that, as we'll see in the other commentary, it's an event that is very related to what I want to deal with. And that's coming, the Muslim Nevi'im is going to speak that out. Okay, that's why I need both commentaries. Each one's going to give a little bit more than what the other one doesn't have. So now, he says that's a lot. And now look at his biggest proof. Who is the one? Who is the rabbi who said the statement? Rav. So look at this verse. We need Rav Balmeiner Hazeh. Rav was the author of the statement that said Shomer Kol Nachash Shene Kenachash Elazar Zayin Nachash. He made that statement. Who by Asher He also did an act of Nachash. Shomer he says Rav Barik B'Mavra. Rav would check if a fairy would come. If he if he, if he he said listen I'm not sure if I should go out of town and do this mitzvah or not. If the fairy comes now, I'll go. If it doesn't go, I won't go. So he himself did a nachash. And then there's a whole bunch of cases he brings down where certain rabbis would go to children when they're reading Shukim. They ask them to read a pasuk for me. What pasuk are you holding at? And that pasuk would give them an idea of what to do. Mordechai in the Surat Purim did that. He went over to the kids. He says, what are you learning? He says, Utsa, Esa, Vitufar, Dabra, Dabra, Lakim. He says, you know, negative. They were learning the plus. Wicked people try to do bad and we don't have to be afraid. Huh. So Mordechai understood what's going to happen. So we see lots of people did this. Right? So therefore, obviously, if Rav himself did it, so it must be there are certain ways that are permitted and certain ways that are not permitted. Look at the very bottom that's underlined. So called not. So, so what Rav says, what Rav meant is, any type of fortune telling that a person doesn't make a sign in the beginning like made, that's not a correct sign and you should not rely on it if it's not like Eliezer or Yenison uh, or you shouldn't consider that it should come to you there is all kinds of Gemaras over there and, and that's just amazing stuff now, uh, so, now clearly you see there are signs you can make and there are signs you're forbidden to make now you go to the second paragraph on the left side it says and sometimes you don't need overt signs even little hints is something the rabbis tell us something else it says there's three categories which is explain in a minute a home, a baby, and a wife even though you can't make nahash with it clear signs but there is still a simon it's still a, 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 a smaller sign it is a smaller sign it is. sometimes it's, it's like a nahash it's clear clear sign and there's subtle signs and these are subtle signs claiming to say oh, these ain't a nahash, can nahash, some love. even though it's not a sign like we mamish rely on it but yesh sa simon bedover there's a little bit of a sign with some echli v'lechazek in yotov to make your heart happy and to strengthen you or if it's bad, you should be concerned. So what does that mean? Uperish bias. What does bias mean? In bona bias kodesh. If you build a new home, the yellow of and right after you move into the new house, something good happens. Or something bad happens. Some bias. Right after you dedicated the home, that's a little bit of a sign. Not a not a complete sign, but it's a little bit of a sign. And you look yellow, look at Hisha, but that same thing if you just had a kid who just got married and something very good or very bad happens shortly after that. That's also a sign. But Amr, they said, but who the Ischasa tells him, but it has to happen three times. Then then you can rely on it. In other words, he said like this if there are three times when you do something, and then, I'm, I'm, you know, let's say you just built a house and three, three bad things happen. Right? 
So now, you know, so if one time, it's a little bit of an indication. But if three things happen, then it's, it's even, and these are things you didn't predetermine. What we're saying, a, a, a nachash you can rely on is you make the test, see if the test comes out, and now that can strengthen you, and because that's a sign from God. But let's say you didn't predetermine it, but it just happened in these three particular and only these three. You just built a house, you just got married, just had a child. With those itself are spiritual events in your life. And then three bad things or good things happen very shortly after that. That is a big sign that one can rely on. But, uh, but, if, you, uh, but if you make a, a, a sign by yourself and you set the, the circumstances, you don't need three times and even one time is enough. And he brings a proof. One of the proof is from Yaakov. It's very interesting. What did Yaakov tell Yehuda? He said, Yosef Einanu, I don't have Yosef. The Shimon Einanu, I don't have Shimon. Ves Binyamin Tukhaklo, they took Binyamin. And these were three events that happened all shortly after Binyamin was born. In other words, after the birth of Binyamin, three negative events happened and therefore he was concerned ah so that was why you know, even though it doesn't have to be but Yaakov was concerned maybe more bad things are going to happen so this is that idea of Nachash we still have to give you the interpretation of the Muslim Avim but we're way out of time so we'll pick this up next week